Welcome to worship on the second Sunday of Easter, April 24th, 2022. Uh, one name has been added to the prayer list since it was printed. It's the family and friends of Wayne Jones. I do have a few announcements today before we begin worship. Uh, the reopening task force met again last week. Um, the group has made a number of changes and also has a statement they'd like me to read. Um, the first, the changes. Uh, for church events, uh, food may be served in the Fellowship Hall buffet style if desired. Um, all foods should be served with serving utensils though, no big bowls of chips or things like that that people would use hands to self-serve. Also hand sanitizer should be available on tables for people to use before eating. Uh, the fellowship hall may be rented for meals following church functions such as funerals and baptisms, uh, but not yet for other purposes. Uh, occupancy of the fellowship hall should not exceed 100 people for these events. The coat rack in the narthex is available for use again. Uh, the large drawers in the narthex will again be utilized for food for pump. Uh, and beginning next Sunday, masks are recommended but no longer required for singing and worship. And now the statement from the reopening task force. Uh, as we all learn to live within the context of a lasting COVID pandemic, there are new recommendations from the CDC that help us to assess our personal risk for contracting COVID-19. What does that really mean, personal risk? It means that my personal risk might be different than yours. It even means that my personal risk today might be different from my personal risk tomorrow. Personal risk ebbs and flows similar to one's blood pressure, temperature, or weight. Most people understand that personal risk involves your own medical history, medication regimen, and lifestyle choices. But many people may not understand that your personal risk is also impacted by many other factors. The type of environment you're in at the moment, the people you are around and their personal risk factors, the activities you engage in, the COVID-19 transmission level for the area you are in, and your vaccination status and the vaccination status of those around you. In order to move forward safely and successfully, we all need to recognize that for the immediate future, there is still a risk for contracting COVID-19. Because this risk is different for everyone, and each of us operates within varying levels of safe and risky behavior, the way each of us tackles life in the long-term pandemic will be very different. For example, the choice to mask or not to mask and to social distance or not remains with the individual and may vary with the day or event. However, one thing is certain, with compassion, understanding, and an open mind about the choices others make, we can all safely navigate toward our new normal. Just a few other things. Uh, the Northampton County Outstanding Seniors Awards is a program of the County Area Agency on Aging. This program honors individuals age 60 and over who have contributed their time and talents for the benefit of others through outreach, personal action, inspiration, public service, and sports or educational efforts. And one of this year's recipients is our own Mary Hendershot. Congratulations, Mary. Can you wave? And Was that the award ceremony has been canceled? Well, the award has not, though. You're, even, if, even if you won't get to celebrate with goodies, you'll, you've still received the award, and then we're very proud of you. Um, also, you'll get to hear Mary speak today, um, as Mary is giving our monthly 50th anniversary Temple Talk after communion today. Next Sunday, May 1st, uh, two special things are happening. Uh, first, we will have a guest preacher, the Reverend Lynn Rothrock, who was the very first pastor of Prince of Peace, uh, will be visiting with us and preaching at the 945 service. Uh, we will be holding a special coffee hour slash breakfast um, in his honor afterwards. Um, please sign up in the narthex today if you plan to attend so that those preparing that can, can know how much food to, to provide. And second, that same day, uh, we will uh, host a concert of a duo called Harp and Heels at 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, there are still some flyers available in the narthex. Please take one or more of those with you today. Uh, Martin has also written up a statement about Harp and Heels that he's asked me to read. The Harp and Heels concert is next Sunday at 3.30 in the afternoon. As some of you may know, I spent most of my life in the theater. One of the smartest stage directors told me once in the cafe across the street from the theater in Aachen, theater exists to ask but one question, is there a God? One of the things that most moved me this Lent was the series of videos on prayer, and it occurred to me while setting the program for the concert that prayer is a kind of internal dialogue, a questioning. Theology is not my strength, but one of the quotes of Jesus struck me while doing that work was, you worry about many things, but few are needed, or indeed only one. 
We shall hear two immensely talented people touch us with many questions next Sunday about life, love, and why we are. The beauty of their music will move our hearts to feel rather than think about these many things, or perhaps only one. Hope you can join us for that concert next week. Are there any announcements I neglected to make today? If not, let us worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Please stand.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. Looks like it's just you and me today. But actually, that'll work with the story today. All right, if I say Christ is risen, what do you say? Christ is risen. Awesome. So last week, we told the story about when Jesus rose from the dead. And today we're going to hear a story about when he appeared to his disciples after that. And I need you to play the role of one of his disciples. Can you guess which one? Peter. Peter's a good guess. But it's actually Thomas is the one I want you to be today. So, this takes place the day Jesus was raised from the dead. And all the disciples were gathered together in one place. Except for Thomas. I think Thomas was out doing the grocery shopping. No, you don't think so? So, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go hide in the pulpit, pretend that you're gone, while Jesus comes to everybody else. So all the disciples were gathered in a room, and the door is locked, and they're scared because they don't know yet that Jesus is alive. And suddenly Jesus was standing in the room with them. And he showed them his hands, and he showed them his side where the soldiers had hurt him. And all the disciples were very happy. I need you all to be happy. Yeah. 
And Jesus said to them, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And then he was gone. And then Thomas came back. You knew that? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what everybody else did? They said, Thomas, we saw the Lord. Can you do that? Awesome. And you know what Thomas said? He said, no you didn't. No you didn't. <laughs> he didn't believe you. He said, unless I put my finger in the holes in his hands, put my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. That's pretty gross, right? I guess Thomas was kind of gross. So a week later, a week later, kind of like today, a week after after Jesus was raised from the dead, everybody was gathered together again. And guess who was here this time? Thomas. Thomas. He got two weeks worth of groceries last week. So this time Jesus came again and said, Peace be with you. And he went up to Thomas and said, Peace be with you. He said, Stop doubting and believe. Look at my hands. Look at my side. And you know what Thomas said to him? He said, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And you can say that to me anytime you want to. Ha, 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 But Jesus said, it's my son in case anybody doesn't know. Uh, but Jesus said to him, you have faith because you saw me. Blessed are all the people who didn't see me and yet still believe. Thank you for your help today. Thank you all for your help today. Let's pray. Let's pray. <laughs> Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Help us to believe. Amen. Okay, thanks. Go back to your seat. A reading from Acts. Peter has been arrested for proclaiming the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. His response to the charges of the high priest summarizes the early church's proclamation of forgiveness of sin through repentance. When the temple police had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted, this, God exalted this Jesus to be leader and savior at God's right hand, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit who has given to those who obey God. The word of the Lord. Earth and in heaven, let the Lord be praised. With trumpets and all kinds of harps, with drums and dancing, with strings and pipes, and with loud cymbals. Let every living creature join the hallelujahs. Praise the Lord. reading from Revelation. The book of Revelation recounts a mystical vision of the risen Christ experienced by a Christian prophet named John. Here he describes Christ as a timeless redeemer, the beginning, present, and end of all time. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. 
Grace to you and peace from the one who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before God's throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the rulers of the earth, to the one who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a dominion, priests serving his God and Father, to Jesus Christ be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have, seen, who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm going to tell you a story. It has heroes in it, but it's not really about the heroes. It has villains in it, but it's not really about the villains. It has armies and kings and prophets, but it's not really about any of them. This story is about breath. Now, one thing you need to know about breath. In Hebrew and Greek, the languages the Bible was written in, the same word means breath and wind and spirit. So whenever you see any of those words in an English translation of the Bible, it's the same word, breath, wind, spirit, all the same thing. Well, today I'll be translating it as breath. It just makes the story more interesting. Hear now the story of the breath of God. In the beginning, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And in the beginning, there was breath. No air, no oxygen, those things weren't around yet. No lungs, no diaphragm, no bodies. But there was breath. In the beginning, breath swept over the face of the deep. In the beginning, God exhaled. And with that breath, God spoke. 
By the breath of God's mouth, the heavens and all their hosts were made. The breath blew through the cosmos and fashioned planets and stars, nebulas and black holes. The breath blew around the earth, creating air and clouds, rain and snow, forming rocks and oceans, growing trees and flowers, hatching fish and birds, nurturing animals and people. The, ble- the breath blew into these creatures, filling them with life. The breath blew in a special way into human beings, and they awoke and began to be fruitful and multiply. And it was good. The breath rested, settled, calm and tranquil. And then later the breath was called upon to flow to the earth again, for God had been displeased with the creatures and had sent a great flood. The rains stopped. And the breath of God blew once more over the face of the waters, drying the land so the waters would subside. The breath wiped everything clean, and life began anew. And it was good. The breath rested, calm and tranquil. And then later the breath was called upon again. For God had heard the suffering of God's own people who suffered under the hand of the Pharaoh of Egypt. And God had set them free, but as they left, Pharaoh's army pursued them. And the breath blew hard against the waters of the Red Sea, so hard that the channels of the sea were revealed and the foundations of the world were laid bare. And the people were safe. And it was good. The breath rested, calm and tranquil. The breath was mighty and powerful, able to split mountains and break rocks in pieces. Yet as the people traveled through the wilderness, the breath slowed from a torrent to a breeze, more delicate, more soft, and began to breathe in a special way into the lungs and hearts of the people. The breath entered into artisans and priests, filling them so they might create art and offer praise to God. The breath entered into Joshua, filling him so that he might be leader of Israel as the people entered into the promised land. The breath entered into judges like Othniel, Jephthah, and Samson, who ruled the people with courage and wisdom. The breath entered into David, anointing him the greatest king of Israel. God's breath was a breath of wisdom, a breath that gave life and understanding, a breath that led people on a level path. But as time went on, the people ignored the breath. They turned from God and they suffered at the hands of neighboring empires. So the breath found a new way. It chose a few particular people and settled into their lungs. And there it stirred, inspiring them and tickling them and irritating them until it burst forth again. And they breathed out God's word with abandon. These people became known as prophets. The breath settled into a man named Ezekiel, and he breathed out these words. The breath of the Lord set me down in the middle of a valley, Ezekiel cried, and I saw that it was full of bones, many bones, and they were very dry. The breath of God breathed into me, saying, prophesy to these bones, mortal, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I breathed out the words as I had been commanded, and as I did, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come on them, and skin had covered them, and breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then the breath of the Lord sent me to the people of Israel to proclaim to them that they too will be raised up. They too will come back to life. The breath of God will flow into them as well, and they shall live, and they shall know that the Lord has spoken and will act. And the breath settled into a man named Isaiah, and he breathed out these words. A new leader will arise, Isaiah wrote, a branch that grows from the roots of Jesse, and the breath of God will rest on him the breath of wisdom and understanding, the breath of counsel and might, the breath of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The breath of the Lord God will be upon him and he will be sent out to proclaim God's word to the oppressed and brokenhearted. The breath settled into a man named Joel who breathed out these words. I will pour out my breath on all flesh, says the Lord. 
Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. On all my people in those days, I will pour out my breath. And then God breathed in, took a long, deep inhale. And God breathed out again. And the breath flew to a woman named Elizabeth, who gave birth to a son named John, who would later become known as the Baptist. The breath flew to a woman named Mary. The breath lingered there some time, overshadowing and enveloping her. She gave birth to a son named Jesus. And when these two sons, John and Jesus, were grown, they met in the Jordan River. And at that moment, the breath tore the skies, ripped a hole in the very heavens, and soared down upon Jesus like a dove, surrounding him like a pillar of cloud, filling him like a pillar of fire. The breath drove Jesus into the wilderness and then led him back to Galilee, where he began to preach. And every word that came from his mouth was God's breath. The breath that flowed from Jesus' mouth moved mountains, healed the sick, brought sight to the blind, brought the dead to life. On at least one occasion, his followers were moved to say, Who is this that even the breath obeys him? And the breath that flowed from Jesus' mouth taught the disciples. He told them that God is breath, and that those who worship him must worship in breath and truth. He told them that the words he speaks are breath and life. He told them that when he departs, the breath of truth would come to them and dwell within them. He promised them that the breath would teach them everything. The breath would guide them into all the truth. The breath would glorify God. And then Jesus was arrested, condemned, and crucified. On the cross, he cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my breath. And he exhaled, breathed out. The breath that had indwelled him left. And yet, breath doesn't end. Breath doesn't die. On the third day, Jesus was with the apostles again. On the third day, the breath filled him and flowed through him again. On the third day, he said to them, Peace be with you. On the third day, he breathed on them and said, Receive the holy breath. And they did. The breath surrounded them and filled them. It breathed in and out, swirling and expanding, filling the house, filling the city, filling the world, filling all of time. The story of the breath didn't end. Breathe in. Breathe out. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all in cre of creation. Holy One, who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. Guide the congregation of St. John Honesdale and their pastor, Adam Reinhardt, to be a witness in their community to the great love and grace you have given us. God, in your mercy. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy. Up your, uphold your children who cry out to you in their time of need, including Debbie, Ruth, Maureen, Lauren, Linda, Joyce, Reba, Shirley, Bonnie, Elwood, the family and friends of Dolly, Wayne. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. God, in your mercy. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise, especially the art and music ministries of this congregation. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy. Bless all those who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Carolyn Carpenter, Colleen Hall, Diane Flynn, Betty DeVito, Mia Hawk, Carol Schumann, Scott Manicky, Jacqueline Artley, Cameron Mousley, and Ronald Miller. May they have a very happy birthday, and may this year be one of good health and happiness. God, in your mercy. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your Son as Lord and God. With Jesus, our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving breath. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign. 
and you welcome all us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with, uh, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> living and loving God. We praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your breath on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the holy breath in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite Mary... Nope, nope, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I invite Mary Hendershot to come forward for this month's uh, anniversary temple. I <laughs> <laughs> Them, like, wish me luck. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good morning. I'm happy to be here. I joined this church April, no, May, I don't know when, 2007, 2019, I think it was. Thanks to Betty and Tony DeVito. <sighs> what am I supposed to say? I was born and raised in Blairstown, New Jersey. Don't hate me for that. <laughs> But yeah, I just love this church. I was born and raised Catholic, married a Protestant, had two kids, and I moved to Pennsylvania, and here I am. It's easy as that. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, why I walk with a walker? I have multiple sclerosis. I don't die with multiple sclerosis. <laughs> but I just love this church. I love the people in here. They're very, you're, you're all very nice and good and pleasant. <laughs> I guess that's it. Easy, quick and easy. I'm an easy person to get along with. Don't you say anything, Betty. I really ask her over, over the Episcopal apartments. Does she, does she take, does she, is she, because I'm loud and obscene over there. <laughs> but she said, I'm very good in church. <laughs> She, 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 she really, she's really very good in church. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you for, for working your way up to the pulpit here. And it was nice that, that uh, for the first couple months of this, we heard from some of the longest lasting members of this congregation, people who were there from the very beginning of this congregation, and now one of our newest members. There's not too many people newer than, than you to our congregation, Mary, and we're happy to have you. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, please, uh, yeah, go ahead. Please rise for our final hymn. Yeah, you'll, um, you put them out at the... Okay. Um.
God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving breath of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Go in peace. Tell what God has done.